Welcome back to the eighth video about the fantastic MMC 5983MA 3-axis magnetic sensor, high performance of course. In the previous video we implemented a temperature compensation for our AMR Wheatstone bridges. Card here, link in the description. In this video we will do a full scale matrix offset vector calibration for that thing. Enjoy! This video will probably be rather short because I'm repeating exactly the same that I've already done in the fourth of the details video about the QST QMC 3-axis magnetic sensor card here, link in the description. So if you don't know what a scale matrix plus offset vector calibration for 3-axis magnetic sensor is, watch that video first. I have uh, given additional information about that uh, vector matrix calibration in the third part of the details about the QST QMC chip card here, also link in the description. So, without <laughs> explaining everything again, just a quick overview what we will do in three easy steps. First, we will collect a lot of data from our little chip here by yeah, bringing it into 14 different orientation and rotating it in each of these orientations of 360 degrees or plus minus 180 degrees because there's a cable hanging here. Then second, we will take that data and put that into a PC software, a link in the description, and that PC software will calculate for us the required matrix and vector for the calibration. And then we simply implement the <clears throat> according functions in our library and we should have a nicely calibrated 3-axis magnetic sensor. We'll see. Anyway, I will we'll start with a little time lapse here uh, of the <clears throat> yeah, 14 360 degree rotations. But before that, let's have a little look at the code I'm using now. For now, I only made some changes to the sketch itself. So in the setup, uh, everything is the same. We make a begin and then we set our offset values here, which we determined in the last video. So we can have temperature compensated data. Then in the loop, I wait for 100 milliseconds. So I want to have an output uh, with 10 Hertz data output. I'll take the temperature uh, because otherwise our temperature compensation will not work. I read the temperature, also part of that. And then I take a magnetic field measurement and I read the output of that and then I simply print out here all three values x, y and z of our raw axis output 18-bit offset that is temperature compensated. Yeah, uh, with a tab in between. And this will go to the serial monitor and we will collect a whole lot of data. And here's the output on the serial monitor and yeah, nothing new here, just our offset values as 32-bit integers. Okay, and now enjoy the time lapse. Here's all the data I collected yeah, in these 14 different rotations, uh, rotating plus minus 180 degrees, and it's quite a lot. But we are ready for the next step. 
Before we actually use the software, we need one more data point required by that software. And that's the strength of our Earth magnetic field at our location in the units we have measured. So, according to some federal <laughs> oh, the measurement authority, yeah, we have a federal institution here that's constantly measuring the magnetic field in Germany. The Earth magnetic field in Germany, to be more exact in the town of Braunschweig, is currently 49.6 micro Tesla or 496 milligauss. So one Tesla equals 10,000 gauss. Now our MMC 5983MA, one LSB is 0 0.0625 milligauss. So these 496 milligauss divided by 0 0.0625 gives us 7,930. 36 LSBs and that's the second input to our software. Here's the software I was talking about, uh, Magneto 1.2, uh, yeah, a link in the description, etc. Uh, anyway, I entered my 7938 here and I selected my data file and now I just click calibrate and we have here our combined biases, so a vector, and here we have our scale matrix. Great! Now we need some code to do something with the uh, scale matrix and the offset vector. And again, rewatch that fourth part of the QST QMC video for the details. I'm just, yeah. <clears throat> going very quickly over the stuff here. So I have a new public type in my class calibration, which will take up my bias vector and my scale matrix, so a three by three array. Then I have in my class two, a new private static constant calibration, which is by default calibration and it's mostly all zeros, but for the diagonal in my matrix, which is all one. Why they are all one, also explained in the previous videos. And I have a private variable calibration. In the constructor, I initialize my calibration class variable with that default calibration constant. Then I have two public functions and yeah, I skipped over the definitions of these functions in the class definition. We don't really need to have a look at that. So set cal calibration gets a calibration as an argument and sets the internal calibration variable to that argument. And reset calibration just resets the calibration to my default calibration constant. And at the core of things, I have here a calibrated axis output function, which takes our calibration data and first does a vector subtraction. It's a minus, so it's a subtraction, I guess, a vector subtraction. And then one part for each axis of a matrix multiplication. Again, I explained that in detail in the other video. Before we have a look at the sketch itself, please note that the output of our little Windows program here can be put directly into such a calibration struct if you just place some commas and some brackets around the numbers. And here it is, we are now in the sketch itself. Here is the calibration struct as a constant with exactly the numbers we got from that program. In my setup, I have an additional line here now, MMC set calibration with that calibration constant. So we can make use of it and I print out here X offset x calibrated and then the same for y and z just for the serial plotter that we have some labels. 
in the loop. I only changed the zero print statements at the very end where I now print out the raw access output 18 bit offset. So just com uh, temperature compensated and then the calibrated access output. Yeah, for the X, Y and Z axis. Now let's have a look at the great serial plotter. Okay, uh, six lines as expected. Let me do a 360 degree turn here. I try to do that as consistent as possible and then have a look-see. Yeah, I think... That's it, I can pull the plug. Okay, what do we have here? So uh, blue and red are our X channels, our X axis, and blue is just offset compensated and red is calibrated. And our zero line is here in the middle. And you can see that the <laughs> calibrated output goes really from 4000 to minus 4000 while the uncalibrated output here is yeah extremely offset into the negative region. We see exactly the same for the y-axis that's the uh, green and the orange line. The green line being just the offset, uh, offset compensated line and uh, orange is the calibrated line. And here we also see that the orange calibrated goes between 4000 and minus 4000. While, well, not as extreme as for the x-axis, but the green line goes here uh, over 4000 and reaches not quite minus 4000, more like uh, minus 3000. So that calibration has a symmetry, uh, symmetrized, is that the word? Symmetrized everything. Mm. So we successfully calibrated our little three axis magnetic sensor, but I won't let you go home without a, yeah, <clears throat> a little uh, cherry on top. And therefore we do an actual azimuth calculation. That is, we will calculate now from all that data, the compass direction. And for that, I just changed the loop here in the script. So I have a new variable float alpha. That will be our uh, compass direction, our angle in degree. And further down, I do that azimuth calculation from my y-axis and my x-axis, of course, with the uh, calibrated values. That's a calculation if the z-axis is really pointing up and everything is uh, lying flat on the desk. Uh, details on how that is done, the math involved in the third part already carded uh, of the QST QMC details video, uh, link in the description again. And then I print out my compass direction and no longer all these uh, yeah, x, y, z values. I've drawn a little compass rose here and I aligned it using my iPhone on the desk. Uh, please <laughs> excuse the odd angle, but I really didn't take into account the direction of the magnetic field when I put up <coughs> my desk here. So anyway, uh, north is here and we're pretty much aligned. Just verifying my, the alignment with my little compass and yeah, they, they uh, <clears throat> disagree a few degrees, the iPhone and the compass. But eh, anyway, now we have a look at the serial monitor and yeah, my compass chip here says when I align it here into that direction. So that's the north direction of the board. We are at 3.52 point, uh, let's say point uh, 0.8, okay. 
and then we turn that around and uh, align it to the east best as I can and we get a reading of 82 point yeah let's say a seven so they are missing about seven something degrees and here are also missing about seven something degrees and if we turn around further sorry I have to stand up so I can look at the whole thing from the top and align it pretty well we are at 175.5 yeah, so yeah, yeah and again pointing to west we are at 264.5 that actually looks really good uh, let's crunch the numbers so this is uh, what we uh, <laughs> what the iPhone said the compass direction is that's what we measured and that's the error according to the iPhone and remember uh, the compass uh, had a different opinion than the iPhone anyway <clears throat> these are the errors and these are at the first glance uh, they are quite large yeah between uh minus 7.3 degrees and minus 4.5 degrees but if we average the errors and then change the sign we get a correction factor here of uh, 6.125 and if we apply that correction factor just plus to our measured numbers we get these compass direction and if we calculate then the error that looks much better so uh, maximum uh, 1.6 degrees minimum minus 1.2 degrees and yeah please note my <coughs> compass rose was not the most exact thing uh, to do for that and uh, yeah also using an iPhone uh, for the measurement is maybe not the most precise instrument also my calibration method might be improved so uh, and of course our temperature compensation could also be better but I think you can get below one degree of error with that little chip here indeed if you are really able to get down to 0.5 five degrees i don't know but uh one degree precision yeah uh, from a single chip solution is already quite good believe me if you saw the qst qmc videos uh you know what i'm talking about and this thing is really no low noise so you saw these yeah uh at azimuth calculation um yeah plus minus a few tenths of a degree noise so yeah i'm 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 really happy that's it for today so yeah that chip is really good and uh we compensated it we calibrated it and we getting a compass direction out of it great um yeah the the library itself the library code is awful right now i have to go over that and at some point of time i will do it uh, if i actually have some time and currently i'm uh, yeah i mentioned that often lately but uh, it's <laughs> the truth the sorry truth the sad truth uh, i am very pressed for time nowadays anyway uh next time in that series i will show you a nice and cleaned up library i will probably completely drop the 16-bit support because uh, uh, yeah really uh, i don't need it maybe some people who need a really fast uh, thing magnetic sensor could use it but uh, i don't think that this 
<laughs> uh, sensor here is really made for fast measurements. So um, anyway, it might be a while uh, before I continue in that series and really close it up. And I have no idea what we will do next week. We'll see. Till then, bye.